This is the Muskrat Creek shelter camp area. Privy's up that way. The actual shelter's over that way. And the trail is like right there. Standing Indian is the next shelter, but it's only five miles away, so I'm hoping I can go a little further than that. But the shelter after that is 12 miles away, and I don't think I can go that far in one day yet. Uh, it also rained last night, so everything is very damp and it's a little foggy. It is 9.15 and I am pretty much ready to roll out. This was really pretty with the fog and everything, I just wish it wasn't so wet. Because I keep my, uh, keep my camera in the side pouch here, and it's a pain to get in and out of. I wish I had a shoulder strap for it, but um, Trifle Outdoors didn't have any. I don't know if Outdoor 76 had any, but that's kind of my last hope. Because I don't know if it's going to fit in the shoulder strap pockets because they're made for phones and not cameras. But it'd be super convenient to have it way more accessible than it is now. Because I haven't been using it a lot these past couple days because it's been so wet. I'm about a mile into the hike today. I'm eating my breakfast oval. The Chunky Dell Trail, which is apparently shortcut into Franklin. I don't think I've mentioned this yet, so I'm gonna talk about it now. When I was at Neil's Gap, I got a um, pack fitting, and the guy was basically like, your pack fits, and unless something is custom, it's going to be a little big or a little small. But the digging into my back was caused by my food bag being too low all the recommendations I've seen are for to have the like your sleeping bag on the bottom and then your food bag and then like your light stuff on top and he was like nope that is wrong you want your heavy stuff as high as it can go without um, like messing up your center of gravity so I've had it higher and that has worked out very well it's not pressing on my lower back anymore However, it's not fixing the shoulder strap issue, which I th I'm hoping is just because there's not enough padding on it, because I have really bony shoulders. But I've also had like the seam of my shirt I feel like it's being pressed into my um, shoulder. So I don't know if I need to get a new shirt or if the padding would help. I don't know if Outdoor 76 sells this padding. I know Z-Packs does. Um, but I'd have to order it somewhere. This is really pretty. Nice lush green landscape. Um, so I guess I'm gonna go to Outdoor 76 and see what they have and then try to figure out from there. If I was gonna run into a bear, I feel like this is the perfect environment because it's so like low visibility. But um, at one day, like right before it snowed, when I was getting to low gap with late start, we ran into this guy whose shuttle driver told him that there was a lot of bear activity between Muskrat, Sanding Indian, and Carter Gap. There's apparently a bear who will like wait for people to hang their bags. And since most people don't hang them high enough, um, it'll grab them. Uh, I haven't seen any comments about this on Gut Hook or Far Out um, or like really on the Facebook page. So, and we didn't have any issues last night, but it also rained. Um, but that is the uh, knowledge that I have currently. And I feel like everyone should always be aware that bears could be in the area because they live on the East Coast. And we are on the East Coast, so. And like any animal, if they learn that there's an easy meal somewhere, they're gonna keep going back to it. They're not gonna be like, oh, let me go forage for berries when there's a place where I can get tons of delicious food for minimal effort. I've been out here for a little bit of time now, and I finally started to find my groove. Uh, I haven't really mentioned the fundraiser much because I was mostly worried about um, like getting to camp at night, getting over the next mountain and whatever. But now I think I'm finally starting to come into it. So 
Thank you to everyone who has donated to the fundraiser. Last time I checked, we had reached the goal and upped it, and we're now halfway to the new goal. Um, or I guess three quarters of the way. Um, so thank you so much for donating. I've been trying to think of a way to, um, to like talk about Tho and like remind people why I want to donate. So I think I'm going to try to talk about some of the foster dogs that we've had. This first story is going to be really short. Uh, the first dog that we fostered with Thoha was many years ago in 2010, I believe. It was a dog named Charlie. He was super hard to get pictures of. Anytime he took out a camera, he would immediately run away. Um, and he, I believe, was experiencing shelter stress, so he wasn't doing super well. And we took him into our home, and we had Colby and Fiona at the time. Angel wasn't in the picture yet. And he presumably found a lovely home. Most of the people who adopt our dogs don't actually keep in contact with us, which is sad because you don't need to be in constant contact, but like an email once a year would be nice, you know? Um, or like posting on the Facebook page. But he, he has most likely passed by now. That was 10 years ago and he was a couple years old at the time. Uh, but that was our first experience with fostering and then we didn't foster again until 2011 which was Angel. She was just supposed to be a foster, obviously, and then my sister fell in love with her, and the rest is history. I know those were short stories. I have, um, I have more stories, but I want to, like, write them down before I try to say them. Uh, so thank you for listening. Uh, I'm a couple miles away from the shelter now. I'm hoping to go past it, but there's a really big mountain I have to climb over. So we'll see. It's also still foggy. I took my alpaca off because I thought it was finally getting warm and now I'm freezing. Been hiking for two hours now. Still super foggy out. Hope the fog clears up because my tarp and everything is wet. I would like it to dry, but it might also rain tonight again. I think someone said there were thunderstorms predicted. So, I might not be able to dry out for a couple days. Rocks, rocks, and more rocks. And wet rocks. Why is there a random egg? And another one. Trail magic something. Ahead. Lit. It's Easter soon. I don't even know what day of the week it is half the time. I see a road down there and some cars. I hope they have fruit cups because I've been thinking about that since Hogpen Gap. There's another one. It's not a very leave no trace, but at least it's something edible. It's like a whole operation. What's this? A piece of wood screwed onto a tree. An interesting bridge design. section that I won't see any in them. The people behind me might finally be catching up. The trail magic, was, bleh. trail magic was awesome. There was fresh fruit, there was vegan beans, there was meat beans, um, banana pudding. They really thought about uh, what hikers want. And I guess on um, Easter Sunday they come out and they do like omelets which I wouldn't eat but that's pretty sweet. I'm really glad there are people who are doing that kind of stuff because especially like this spot standing in is like a two mile long mountain super steep. It's really nice to get like a little boost right before you go up one of these mountains. This is the standing Indian shelter the prairies down there. 
It's got a rickety picnic table, this bench, some mice lines. That might be the hiker log. This one's pretty small. This is like barely going up the mountain. And earlier, when I was trying to tell Angel's story, um, it was very cold and I did not like it, so I was trying to rush. And I left out like the part where she had three previous owners to us. She was called Angel Flame and Ginger. And every time she, I don't know where she came originally, but every time she was returned to a shelter, uh, it was because she had a bad attitude and she wasn't housebroken. And the, I think it was the last time she was returned, she had, the boyfriend was like sleeping on the couch and she had peed on him, which she was a revenge peer. She was mad at you. So they dropped her off at county shelter the day before euthanasia day. Uh, Fola pulled her and called her Piccola and the rest is kind of history. I can go into it more if you have no more questions. I don't know what would be super interesting. She hated the cold. She loved being snuggled up in blankets. Uh, if you gave her food, she was like a shark. She never took anyone's fingers off, but she tried. I am about halfway up um, Standing Indian Mountain. It actually hasn't been that bad. Uh, now that I've said that, this next section is going to be hard. But um, I'm hoping to get to, I think it's Beach Gap. It's like a little unofficial campsite. Um, according to someone at Trail Magic, it's supposed to get really cold. Uh, not tonight, but the two nights after that, which is great. I'm not going to make it to Franklin by then, but hopefully after that I can get in. Not that it will be freezing at that point, but I might have to double zero because my Achilles is still hurting a lot. I've been trying to, that's the one thing I've been stretching a lot and I feel like I'm missing a muscle group when I'm doing it. So uh, hopefully I'll either be on top of the mountain or at the campsite next time. I did jinx myself. This is nothing but rocks. And we're in switchbacks now, so hopefully close to the top. Do they import these rocks, or do they just come out of the dirt? Because I hate them. Quarter mile from the top. And there's this amazing view. It's a little lake, kind of in the top left. The clouds are really low today. I don't know if these trees are burned or if they just look like this. Oh, I dropped my dude. Oh no, the battery. Oh. This side's not as impressive, but this side, amazing. I am headed to Beach Gap, which is um, an unofficial camping site. I'd be moving a lot faster if it weren't for these millions of rocks. Keep slipping on them, keep stepping on them weird. I don't like them. I am 0.3 miles from Beach Gap. I'm hoping there's going to be space because it's not like a big site. It's not like a shelter. Um, and I'm just chugging along trying to get there because it's 5 o'clock. Normally I like to be at the shelter by 5 o'clock because this is going to be probably a 9 mile day. I'm going to have to check the exact mileage, but it's a big one. Today's mileage from Muskrat Creek Shelter to Beach Gap is 9.3. I think this is the second biggest day that I've done. Definitely feeling it. So my goal going forward is to get to 80... Betty Creek Gap, which is like seven miles, and then the next day get to Rock Gap Shelter, which is about eight miles, and then go into Franklin the next day from Rock Gap. I would like to stay at Chica and Sunset's Hostel, but they only have four beds, um, so that might not happen, but there's a bunch of other options. I'm not super worried about it. I forgot, but I did make the mac and cheese last night. I boiled, I put the pasta in here, and then I, uh, it to boiling and then this isn't really a koozie but I let it sit for a little bit and then I put it in a bag. Ew. Gross. Put it in a bag and then voila. 
Doesn't taste as good as if you're at home, but worked pretty well. And I don't think I, maybe I mentioned it, but I did I have one tortilla left. I used one of the Nor rice and I made a couple with it. I used the hummus on it, the avocado, the chia seeds. Uh, probably won't be buying tortillas again because um, it took me like two weeks to actually eat them. Um, that's going to end today. Don't forget to donate to my fundraiser. Uh, hopefully that story I told today wasn't super confusing. I'm not a great storyteller. <laughs> uh, so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.